Hello there and welcome back to another edition of the Hot Lab Classic Remastered. And this time we're taking a look at the 1995 Chevrolet Corvette ZR1. I've mentioned before the C4 Corvette might be my favourite Corvette and the ZR1's the best version of the C4 Corvette so I guess this is my favourite Corvette of all time, I guess. Uh, the ZR1, for those of you who don't know, this original ZR1, uh, it was a bit of a collaboration project between GM and Lotus, who I think they owned part of, or maybe all of it at the time. Uh, and they basically bought Lotus in and said, can you make this car more complete as a sports car? Obviously, the Corvette's always been very fast and flashy, but they wanted, like, handling and maybe some sophistication. And so they called Lotus, because naturally that's who you go to. Uh, and they tweaked the suspension. I think they did a couple of bits with the chassis. And most keyly, they looked at the V8 and revolutionized it. The Corvette V8 was always a bit agricultural. Still is kind of to this day. Uh, well, as the one that was in this car that eventually got slotted in had dual cams. It was 32 valve. It was a proper motor. This was a proper job. And ultimately, ZR1 turned out to be unreliable because, well, it's a Chevrolet Lotus project. That's what happens. And also, it was very expensive. I think this was about two or three times more than the standard Corvette C4 was. So, and I think that was like a top trim C4 as well. So, uh, they didn't sell very many of these. It wasn't all that successful. Uh, but it did pave the way for fast Corvettes to come. Obviously, you had the Z06s, which you always had. Uh, and then the ZR1 would come back in 09, I think, with the C6, which had the supercharge on it and looked cool. So, yeah, very cool car. Uh, I think it looks fantastic, because, of course, it does. Uh, some cool colour options as well. In case you're wondering, the race mod's going to be ran by the standard Corvette Coupe, which is actually the most powerful one and the lightest one. I think this is technically the heaviest Corvette you can buy. And then there's the Grand Sport, which... I think makes a little bit less power than this, and that's obviously uh, just sort of a stripped down racer for the road, essentially. So the complete polar opposite uh, when it comes to the C4. Anyways, front engine is rear wheel drive, 652 horsepower, 1,415 kilos. Those statistics scare me because that's not too dissimilar to that Cosmo I had last time out. That was terrible. 109 kilometers an hour in first gear. Uh, I... We are going to have to use first gear. Oh, God. Anyways, this car is going to get six laps of the Motorsports Land track in order to set the best time it possibly can. Our current leader is the Mitsubishi GTO LM Edition 99. That car's at a time of a 27.017. The ZR1 C4 unlikely to beat that. In terms of where this can end up, well, the Grand Sport went round in a 30.777. Uh, admittedly, that I think I relied a lot on the torque and the second gear pull, whereas this is going to be far more reliant on first gear and uh, trying to sort of tame all the issues that come with that, i.e. trying to get the power down to the ground. But I tell you what, it is, if you saw the last episode, you'll know I wrestled with the... Uh, Unos Cosmo 30.271 on its first flyer. That is impressive and it beats the Grand Sport. Um, other than that, I mean, I don't know. Viper, maybe? I don't think this is going to be quick as the Viper GTS. The Viper GTS was far more controlled than this was and it does make more power and all the rest of it. So, uh, but we'll see. Maybe we could get them to 30 in this. But yeah, uh, this feels a gazillion times better than that Unos did last time. That Unos was uh, not good, uh, very bad. I think that might actually, to be honest with you, thinking about that Unos more and more, that genuinely might take the cake for one of the worst cars I've ever driven around here. Driving something like this, which ironically enough does drive a bit like a Lotus or like a TVR where it does sort of feel like it's, you know, mere seconds away from trying to kill you. Um, I would rather drive this than I would drive that Unos any day of the week. I will take potential mauling at the cost of actually being able to go around a corner somewhat straight. No, this does drive, like I say, remarkably like something like a TVR or a Lister or 
there is that constant fear at the back of your mind like this is going to try and kill me and it does it really does try to kill you but um, it's also quite rewarding to uh, put a lap together in it so yeah it's a uh, catch-22 how do you like your Corvettes consistent but a little bit slow or very fast with the uh, side effect of death Tyler, your choice. Ah, that last lap was going to be quicker. I mean, it was pretty consistent in the lap times. You can sort of see where it can go. There's definitely point two in this. There's probably point three in it, to be honest with you. This could be a under 30 contender. I have no doubt. It just doesn't behave itself uh, for long enough to really get there, which is a shame because it, yeah... It actually drives all right. It's, yeah, God, that final lap. That could have been something, but um, unfortunately, it's all for nothing. It's even faster in a straight line than that Cosmo was, which tells you how bad that Cosmo was again. Um, yeah, a bit of a shame we couldn't pull more lap time out of that because it definitely could go a little bit quicker, but uh, I will take that. A 30.271. We'll place this into 143rd place. Goes slightly quicker than the TVR Cerbera and the TVR Chimera, which backs me up that this is basically a British sports car. Um, slightly slower than the Eclipse GST, the EK Civic, the Lexus GS400 RX7 Type RSR, uh, and the big twin turbo Fair Lady Z we had go around as well. Um, it is 0.5 up the road from the Grand Sport. It is about 0.3 down on the Viper GTS. As I said, realistically, I do think there is probably 0.2 in there, so you could get it a little bit closer to the Viper. I would personally recommend the Viper GTS over this. Viper GTS is just more controllable. You get more power. It's a better car, uh, but nevertheless, this was still uh, quite impressive indeed. And uh, yeah... Cool, I'm just happy to not drive that Cosmo uh, um, again. Anyways, that's it for this episode. Thank you all very much for watching. Join me next time when I'll be driving something completely different. Until then, farewell.